Hello everyone, welcome to today's webinar. Thank you all for joining. We are glad to have you here today. This webinar will cover the enhancements made in version 1.3 of the Ka IoT platform. My name is Vlad. I'm a member of the product marketing and communications team here at Ka, and I'll be your host today. Today we will review in some detail the new key features that were introduced to the Ka version 1.3. Before we begin though, if you have any questions during the live webinar, please post them in the questions tab located at the webinar sidebar and we'll address them at the dinner session. All right then, without further ado, let's get started. First topic I will briefly discuss is the Ka Cloud. So we offer a no strings attached Ka Cloud account. With your account, you will gain unlimited access to all the Ka features. Uh, to get started, just go to kaproject.com and sign up. Once you do, you'll find all the features, widgets, and dashboard templates that Ka has to offer. Using our built-in device simulator to generate demo data, you'll be able to experiment building an IoT solution even if you don't have any connected devices. All right, let's move on and talk about the cloud UI. First thing I'd like to point out is the intuitive design of the user interface. Kazi UI offers plenty of tips and help materials to navigate the platform. This includes online tutorials that offer deep explanations of Ka's more advanced features that are essential for building complex IoT solutions. All right, now let's uh, talk about the end-to-end -end solutions that are managed by Ka. In many cases, Ka's intuitive design lets you build fully functional IoT solutions with minimal engineering skill. The majority of configurational tasks are performed via graphical UIs, widgets, and dashboards. Writing code is uh, rarely required. The Ka team is diligently working to enhance the platform with each new release. So if there's something missing or you think that should be added, feel free to send us your suggestions via our website. Now let's talk about how Ka uh, supports the enterprise deployments. Ka offers hosted and self-hosted deployment types. On top of that, industry-leading customer support, development services, white labeling, platform redistribution license, and other benefits that maximize cost value for enterprise users. Also, one of the features that we're currently developing is the identity and access management feature. I'll provide more insight on what it is and what other enhancements we're looking at and working on at the end of the webinar. Uh, all right, now let's uh, check out what's new. So we added new IoT templates, branding customization, file management, backup and recovery, and finally migration to Helm file and Helm 3. Now let's take a look at the dashboard templates. Currently there are three templates available for download, smart metering, smart building, and fleet management. The next feature is branding customization. You're now able to display your custom company logo, favicon, page background, and colors. Next feature, is the file management feature. All right, it allows you to store files like company logos and other branding elements in the storage system. It allows you to share, preview, download, and uh, delete files, all right? And finally, backup and recovery. Uh, Ka now automatically performs backups on your Ka configuration on a daily basis and uploads snapshots to an AWS S3 bucket. With these snapshots, it's possible to store Ka to an older operational state. All right, now let's move on and talk about the templates more in depth. So concerning the initial configuration steps of the new IoT solution, our team noticed that many solutions have much in common. Therefore, we decided to create use case specific templates that can load into the Kai environment and perform these initial configuration tasks. Um, the benefit of using templates is they act as a springboard for getting your solution off the ground. Now, the process of getting one of these solutions to process data from a connected device can be done with several clicks of the mouse and launching a simulator. So without further ado, let's get to that. First thing we need to do is just go to the web browser and log into cloud.kiot.com, like so. Once you sign up with your free account, you'll be presented with a blank space like so. And if you wanna create a template, you just click add solution from template and then click build building management system and then click create. And then once you click that, it'll start building your building management system. All right, I'm not gonna do that because I already have one here. So I'm just gonna pick the first one. All right, once you create it, you'll be loaded into this field right here. All right, let's click home. 
And as you can see, our simulator is appearing offline. So let's connect it. Just click Connect Simulator. Once you're on this page, just click Fork. And once you click Fork, you'll be redirected to this page right here, right? But you'll be asked to log in with a Google account, Git GitHub account, and Facebook account, right? So I use my uh, Google account for preference. You can use whichever one you want, all right? Now, to run this simulation, we just need the application version. To get it, just go back here, and then copy this code right here, this version. Then embed it here, and then click Run at the top. Let's give it a few seconds, and uh, we'll get it going. <clears throat> all right perfect i think that's more than enough time all right now as you can see we have connected the simulation all right so let's click on it <clears throat> now as you can see there's a series of widgets that pop up that are used as dashboard components to display information such as the temperature and uh, humidity Right. So now what's cool about this uh, interface is that everything is customizable by activating edit mode. Uh, you can move, add and delete the pre-configured widgets to your liking. So let me demonstrate. Let's enter edit mode. You can shuffle however you want. Right. You can also delete by clicking. So let's pick a, you know, a widget and then just click the three little dots and then delete. Simple as that. OK. Now, as you can see, we're left with this blank space here. So in order to change that, we just have to drag it, put the widget in one spot, and then drag it. There's uh, at the bottom right corner, you can adjust the widget. All right, perfect. Well, I want to mention that there's much more you can uh, do to further customize the widgets, but um, I want to invite you to register for your free account and discover the tremendous flexibility of the Kai UI for yourself. Now, let's move on and talk about branding customization. So the version 1.3 supports two levels of branding, two levels of branding. Uh, a global one, which applies to all the tenants and subtenants within a solution domain, and a local one, which applies to subtenants inside a global solution. So administrators of a local solution are limited to customizing their local domain. Now, let me demonstrate how we can change the branding elements. So let's go to the web dashboard and locate the, the branding tab. Simple as that. I'm going to discard the changes. All right, now we're presented with um, these branding elements here. So let's change them. So there are two views uh, of uh, logo types here. So there's a short view and a full view. The short view is this view right here, the collapsed version. And this is the extended version. This is the full view for the logo. All right. Now let's change our short view logo. It's simple as just clicking this and then uploading it like so. All right. Like that. And let's change the full view now. Like that. Now, as you can see, it changed instantly. All right. Now let's change the favicon. Just same process applies to change it. Simple as that. Now let's change the login page. Same process applies as previously. I'm just picking my files like so. Now let's change our uh, company uh, colors. I have a few preset colors set already, so I'm just going to use those. So as you can see, it changes instantly. And the primary color finally. All right, now as you can see, our colors have changed. All right, perfect. Uh, let's not forget to s save our changes, right? Never forget to do that, like so. And let's make sure everything's saved, yep. Perfect.
perfect. Oh, whoops. Um, and yep, perfect. All right. So uh, let's get to it. Uh, I also want to show you how to customize the widgets icons. So to do that, let's just go back to our solutions. Let's go to the, the first one that we've connected. And uh, let's change the icon of the widget. It's as simple as just going to edit mode, clicking the three little dots, edit, and then uploading your own alternative, like so. I'm going to save. As you can see, that instantly changed. All right, um, that's about it. Uh, so <coughs> let's now uh, make sure the login page that uh, the login background page that we've changed previously has updated on the front end. So I'm gonna go into the, the incognito tab and just go to cloud.kiot.com, log into my account. Now, as you can see, uh, the the logo and the background have changed. All right, perfect. Now, let's say you don't like this, right? You don't like the changes you've, you've made. Um, you can restore all your changes back to uh, default settings. It's as simple as just clicking a button. Let me demonstrate how. So let's close this. And let's go back to the branding tab. Boom. I'm gonna discard the changes. All right, so the button's right here. Restore to default settings. Simple as that. Now, as you can see, everything's back to, to its original state. Now, uh, let's move on and talk about file management. Okay, So we introduced a new way to store your media files in Ka with uh, Minayo. You can now store your company logos, favicons, login backgrounds, and any other branding elements, as well as firmware, configuration data, and anything else you can really think of. So with Minayo's file sharing file access, it's based on private access and public access. What that means is the private files are accessible by those granted access, while the public files are available to everyone within their respective domain. So let me demonstrate the file management system feature. So uh, just go to web dashboard and find the files tab. All right, perfect. Now that we're in the Minio browser, as you can see, this tenant has the two domains with private and uh, public access. All branding resources are stored under the WD resources path, right? And there you'll find all the files that we previously uploaded. You can also create your own folder and upload any type of files such as firmwares. So let's create a firmwares path and upload the Arduino under it. All right, so let's firmwares. Create the path. Oh, to create the path, you need to just click this little plus uh, button with a folder on it, like so, and then just type the name of your path, and then press enter to create it. All right, then all you have to do to upload an Arduino file or any, any file you'd like, um, you just click this plus button with the red circle outline on it, and then click upload file. I'm gonna pick mine. Now that that's downloaded uh, and uploaded, uh, you can designate it as a public, as public and use the Arduino firmware for over the air updates. You can also share the link uh, to allow the file to be downloaded. To share it, it's as simple as clicking the three little buttons and then uh, clicking the share button. And then you can copy link and share it, like so. Simple as that. Now let's uh, move on and talk about backup and recovery. Now, everyone knows how important it is to per periodically back up your data and have a convenient way to recover it. In this version, we introduced the disaster recovery plan. It essentially backs everything up on a daily basis at midnight and uploads the snapshots to the AWS S3 bucket. Okay, now let's go back to the presentation and um, <clears throat> let's talk about the migration to Helm 3 and Helm file. Now, Ka consists of many components, and all those components were deployed and managed under a single Helm release. But it turned out to be a painful process to update or terminate a specific component. Uh, but now, with Helm file, uh, we can deploy, update, and terminate those specific components. So with that, it allows us to improve the cluster management functions and security. 
All right, in conclusion to the webinar, I'd like to give you a quick preview into what we have planned in the upcoming releases. So uh, there are two specific features that stand out. The first uh, is support for external widgets, which essentially allows you to create custom graphical widgets like a chart, meter, or any other graphical interface. And you'll be able to download those widgets and embed them into an external web page or solution. And the second feature uh, would be uh, the, in the benefit uh, for our enterprise users. And that would be the advanced identity and access management system. This feature uh, will allow efficient management of tenants, users, and customers. So now on this note, we have come to an end of the webinar. If you have any questions, feel free to contact us by website or our Gitter forum. But for now, let's answer some of your questions. Let's go.